Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live. Good evening, Larchmont and Bamaranick. I'm Anthony Carlo. It's 7.30 on a Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time for the Local Live. Let's watch a preview of what's coming up tonight. Are you ready for a more energy efficient community? Find out how to go solar tonight. Watch out for a possible scam in the village. Details coming up. Another critical letter to the village board has surfaced. We have the story. Stay tuned for this week's LMC TV Play of the Week. Are you interested in custom fashion? Local designers in the town may suit your needs. And let's find a caring home for our pet of the week. Village manager Richard Slingerland released a letter to the community yesterday warning of a possible scam regarding the Transit Oriented Development Area, or TOD. According to reports to the village, residents were told by one or more persons that the village was going to buy private property for public use. Mr. Slingerland has said this information is false and that these acts were a potential scam. It is also possible that the scammers are impersonating members of law enforcement, which is a crime. Mr. Slingerland asks that if anyone is approached by someone regarding this false information on the TOD area, they should contact the detective of the Mamaronic Police Department at 914-777-1122, extension 3 for further investigation. Last week, we reported that Nancy Wasserman's critical letter to the Board of Trustees on March 23rd regarding the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Committee practices. Chairman J. Malta Stickert of the Board of Architectural Review read his own letter at the same meeting. He expressed concern over the replacement of a member of his board with a candidate who did not submit a resume. In an email to the local live, Mr. Stickert is trying to learn about the village government and what powers its members have. He added that the community and electorate needs to get educated about the people they put up on the board of trustees. The way this was handled shows a severe lack of professionalism and common courtesy and raises ethical and legal questions that need to get answered. Now I know the selective candidate and uh, have served with him on the bar before and I agree he is equally qualified as a person that got replaced from the bar. Nevertheless, the right thing to do would have been to reappoint the sitting member and continue the discussions about the mayor's power to appoint outside the bar and ask the selected candidate to volunteer for some of the other open volunteer slots, something he indicated himself he was interested in. This would have avoided the disruption and almost lack of a quorum for the last meeting. Also, it serves the village of Ameranak well to have new people appointed to the boards once in a while to instill fresh ideas. Only if we progress will we get better and maintain the high standard of living in the friendly village. As always, you can catch up on municipal meetings and more local news online at lmctv.org. In other news, this Saturday, April 4th, there will be a total lunar eclipse. The course of the ellipse will be at 6.16 a.m. and will last a little under five minutes. NASA predicts the short-lived eclipse will be the shortest of the century. This will be the third of four lunar eclipses in what is called a tetrad. Make sure you plan ahead and pick a nice spot to watch the eclipse because the next one won't occur until September. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll start our live roundtable discussion. Solar, the power for you. We're talking about the solarized Larchmont Mamaroneck effort. Find out why it matters to you and the community, how to do it, and what it can cost and save. As always, we want you to join the conversation. You can call, email, or tweet. The contact information is on the screen. Our guests are Julia Steinmetz, the project lead of the Solarize program and member of Larchmont's Committee on the Environment, Lee Streisfeld Leitner, head of residential sales at Solar Sunrise Solutions, Sunrise Solar Solutions, and Frank Owens, member of the Town of Mamaroneck Sustainability Collaboration Committee. It's all a lot of words. Thank you for joining us. 
You're welcome. Why is going solar important to our community? Let's start there. Well, you can look at it uh, from a number of different angles. I think from a, an individual family standpoint, it's the chance through this program for incredible savings and for getting the solar panels on your house for up to 15% below retail. So there's that aspect. And on a larger community aspect, um, it helps with our air quality. Um, the less power that we need to generate through power plants that's coming from the sun, it means more clean energy and that's better for everyone. And overall, it also helps with uh, energy independence. So it, it's a win-win. Okay, Frank, because you're involved with the whole um, environmental going green program, mm -hmm. do you see a bigger you know, benefit to the community as a, as a whole? Yeah, I think... Um one of the things that's been really nice about uh, the Solarize program is that uh, we've been doing it as a tri-community effort. So the village of Mamaroneck, the town of Mamaroneck, and the village of Larchmont. And so it's been nice to get out in, in the, the mayor and supervisor have been, mayors and supervisors have been so supportive. And, and then there are other initiatives that in, in the town and the villages are trying to promote, such as biking, more biking. Um, being smarter about uh, how we um, use use things, so I think it's been good from that perspective. Well, why, since we've mentioned it a number of times, what is the Solarize program? <laughs> well, the, I'll start with that. So, the Solarize program is something that's supported by NYSERDA, which is the the state energy research and development yeah. uh, organization, yeah, kind of and there was a competitive that. process to find four communities within Westchester County to, to sort of pilot this program within New York, although it's been done in other states like Connecticut and I believe out in Arizona and, and some other localities. Massachusetts. In Massachusetts as well. So what um, it does here is it gives residents an incentive within a time-limited period to sign up for um, getting a solar panel array on their house with one very seriously vetted um, installer, which Lee can tell us yeah, more about, <laughs> and uh, then to, to get as many people in the community signed up for that program as possible. Now, did the community vet the vendor, <laughs> or was this done by the state and yep. passed down? Oh, I'm going to pass that over to Frank. Yeah, so uh, we, um, uh, NYSERDA, selected an organization called uh, Solarize Westchester, and they actually ran the vetting process. We, the three communities each had a member, I was one of them, who joined in this vetting process and there were about a dozen different firms and we actually, Solarize Westchester actually made the selection but we went through and we interviewed all of the firms and uh, the firm that was selected, Sunrise Solar, was one that we felt was really, um, you know, a great firm and what we liked about them was that they were local uh, unlike some of these other solar firms that are national, they don't really know the community. Um, Sunrise Solar also is a, they came out of a building home builder route, so they know about houses. Most of the Solarize projects, although we do are, we are doing commercial as well, but most of it's going to be resident, residential, so we like that. And then also, their price was very good. So, uh, And the, this promotion is only available if you go through Sunrise correct. Solar Solutions? Sunrise Solar Solutions, yes. Thank you, sorry. Okay. Uh, Lee. So how does it work? Mm. Well, let me chime in at this okay. point. Okay. Um, people who are interested will communicate either directly with my company or they'll go through the Solarize Westchester organization and there's a, we, we have a website, they have a website, but ultimately anybody in the Larchmont and Mamaroneck area will be funneled to us. And just as it's always been with solar, the first thing you want to do is make sure that a, a property is appropriate. So you're looking at how much sun do they get. And that's going to be a factor of which way things are facing, what the angle of the roof is, if it's a, a residence. It matters what hours the sun hits at what yeah, place. Yeah, exactly. The sun is always strongest right at noon. And so the closer the panels are facing to south, which is where the sun is in the sky right at noon, the better it's going to perform. Anywhere from east and west can work, um, but mm -hmm. south is the best orientation. And then it's trees. And in March, my, my Marin, all of Westchester, it's trees, trees, and more trees. So unfortunately, I would say about half of the people who are interested can't do it because they're too shaded 
or they have a beautiful Victorian house, which is lovely to look at, but the roof is too fragmented into little places, and we're looking to put a large array of panels on a roof. Um, so, you know, larger, flatter roofs work better than one that's uh, divided up so by lots of dormers. So you'd rather have flat roofs? Well, not than flat. Really no, pitched. We rather, pitched is okay, but we just don't want them broken up by dormers and angles, or as minimally as possible. Um, but we're looking at, is the property going to work for solar? And then we're going to look at how much energy the household uses to see what size is appropriate. And then we're just going to do our best to predict this house is going to produce this much energy. Oh. It's going to cost, the system's going to cost this much. Here are what the economics are. Uh, does that make sense for you? And that's really all there is to it. But just because there are dormers doesn't mean that it can't work. No, yeah, I want to be clear about that. Everybody right. should, you know, I don't want homeowners to reject their own houses. <laughs> you know, they, we're the professionals. We're the ones who figure out, is it going to work for you? It may or may not, but it's really our job to figure that out. And I, okay, I'm going to, before we go further on into the promotion, which of you have solarized your homes? <laughs> well, when I was asked to lead the Solarized Large Mount Mamaroneck, the, the thing that got me hooked was that, um, in our old house, we were the first family in Larchmont to have solar panels, and that was in 2005. So uh, I've since moved, and now I have a house that's beautiful um, Mediterranean <laughs> tile, and it doesn't work. But um, I'm working with Lee to try to get some, possibly a portico with, with some solar panels. <laughs> and we're, we're one of the properties now that has a lot of shade um, everywhere else it could be, unfortunately. But Gonna give it a try. <laughs> Not that I'm hoping for another hurricane, though. <laughs> yeah, and um, I represent, I think, the majority of people in this community, which is we want. I'd like to do it, but we have too many trees. And uh, so we've had had somebody look at our house before this program. Then Lee was kind enough to go and take a look at it again, and um, it's um, it, so it, it's a little frustrating. But one thing I wanted to add about the program too is a lot of people say to me, well, you know, there are too many trees. Are you really, is this program going to be successful? And to put it in perspective, there are about 8,000 homes across the three communities. And our goal is fairly conservative. We're hoping to get 50 new installations. Oh. And so it's less than 1%. But believe it or not, that will double the existing inventory of solar homes. So we're actually hoping, and we think we're on track, to do a lot better than 50. But I think we're also realistic because there are the issues of um, trees or roof material. The roof's too old, so you can't do it. So uh, we have to go, and we're, you know, that's the point of being here, trying to get to as many people as possible to try to make sure that well, those people that work. Let me just... Ju uh, jump in because I was reading the literature and it talked about a March 31st deadline and it's now April 2nd and I stopped and went well why are we here if the yeah. deadlines have passed so uh, uh, yeah I would love to address that <laughs> um, and there are a few different things that pe dates that people should know about one is the solarized Larchmont Mamaroneck program ends on June 22nd and as part of the negotiated pricing that we have with Larchmont and Mamaroneck solarized um, people need to sign up before that June 22nd deadline to get this special pricing. Also, if we have f up to 30 or more people sign up, we go to additional discount. We've already had 15 or more people sign up, mm -hmm. so we're actually at what we're calling Tier 2. So we're already discounting more than what was originally negotiated. But if they sign up and 30 or more people sign up before that June 22nd deadline, then there'll be additional discounting. But the March 31st deadline, um, one of the things that can make solar work for a lot of people is a state subsidized finance program called On Bill Recovery. It was originally funded through the Green Jobs Green New York program, and that was going to expire for everybody except for the lower uh, income households okay. on March 31st. And it did expire at 5 o'clock on March 31st, but then it rose again from the dead at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on April 1st. Okay, and, and it wasn't it, a joke. And it was not a joke, and we actually called, made calls because it was so um, unexpected. So it was extended for another year. So we do have until March 31st, 2016. Okay, so I'm glad you cleared that up. So how do you figure out how much potentially one could save on energy bills? Well, that again goes to my job. Um, so it's how many panels can we fit on the roof? 
and not just any roof, but the roofs are facing in those directions that we like, which is east to west through the south, southern half of the sky. Um, so how many panels can we fit there? And then looking at the electric bill, what's appropriate? So, you know, some people could have a huge roof that could fit 100 panels, um, but their electric usage is so low that only 20 panels would be appropriate. So I have to look at the, both of those things to figure it out. Um, yeah. But what the savings can be a year can range anywhere from, you know, 500 to 2,500 for, you know, savings on electric bills, depending on their, their roof and their needs. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to actually have to go to a quick commercial break, and when we return, we'll continue talking about Solarize Larchmont and Mamaroneck. Stay tuned. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Welcome back. We are joined now by Town Supervisor Nancy Seligson, who's been kind enough to come in to speak with us about the Solarize effort. And Nancy, just explain to me why this is so important to the town. The Solarize effort is so important to the town because we have ongoing efforts to try and reduce energy use in our community, to reduce the greenhouse gases, and to help people save money doing both of them. This is the perfect program for just that kind of effort. Uh, we have a sustainability collaborative that's the environment committee for the town of Mamaroneck. Frank Owen sits on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We have eight individuals who are professionals with experience and expertise in many different areas. So we have a lot of initiatives going on, but one of the highest priorities for this year and ongoing is to reduce energy use in the town. We've been doing it on the town properties through our energy performance contract that I've spoken about before right. here, mm -hmm. where we've upgraded the ice rink, town center, changed all the street lights to LED lights, um, and it has really helped us reduce our energy use. In fact, today I was looking at some figures for our greenhouse gases and, and energy use, and our electricity has reduced by almost a million kilowatt hours in two years because we mm -hmm. have taken so many measures to reduce energy use. Mm -hmm. So Solarize is so helpful because this is going to bring the residents and the commercial properties into the whole project and into the whole effort. We've only been really dealing with government-owned uh, facilities and the government operations, but this is really the opportunity to help out residents with a fabulous program and product at a discounted rate and really in the easiest way possible. So we're excited. Have, have the um, municipality buildings gone solar? 
No, we haven't, and that's um, a difficult situation for us because the town and the other municipalities enjoy incredibly reduced rates of energy because they buy through the state or provided through oh. a state utility that gives them a very reduced rate. That makes the solar even more expensive in terms of a payback. So we've tried several times because we have some facilities that would seem to lend themselves to solar, mm -hmm. such as the Homics Ice Rink. But in fact, we haven't been able to make the payback work. 30 and 40 years is not really feasible for a municipal building in right. terms of payback. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to see some solar somehow in some kind of pilot project, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like solar is really going to be the answer for municipal buildings. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about the the program, there is a NYSERDA program that, that they're just starting to look at for municipal buildings where the idea is to aggregate the solar demand from many different buildings. So there may be hope for... And, yeah, so we have applied to this program and mm -hmm. we have um, submitted certain buildings that we think are really uh, suitable for it. And we are hopeful that the town of Mamaroneck and those buildings will be chosen to participate in that program. And there's several other energy programs going on. We're looking right. at, I don't know if Frank has mentioned them, but microgrids and community choice aggregation, um, several opportunities that are in the works right now that could reduce cost for mm -hmm. residents and, um, and commercial properties, as well as reduce energy use. Okay, I have some more questions about this program, but I understand that you have to leave us. I'm glad that you it's were true. able to stop by and speak briefly. And I really appreciate the opportunity, and I really want to thank Julia and Frank and Lee because they're doing a tremendous job in pushing this Solarize effort, and I know we're going to be really successful, and we're going to have great numbers and savings to share with everyone. Well, they're also so doing a great you. job explaining it tonight. Good, so, so thank, thank you, you, Nancy. Thank you. We'll Excuse be back me. in a moment. Thank you. Hi, I'm State Senator George Latimer, and I encourage you to watch every week The Local Live. I was going to say something like, I live in Rye, but if I lived in Larchmont and Mamaroni, I would watch The Local Live every week. And I just read Monday. Thank you. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man. One Welcome back to our discussion on solarizing the community. Frank, we were talking costs, and I know you wanted to, to say something about that. Yeah, um, just that uh, when one of the things that we did when we were vetting Sunrise is we went through their calculations because they had were suggesting that savings could be as much as 30 to 60 percent, and I think that we were sensitive about the fact that we didn't want to be making empty promises. So we went through a calculation. So for a typical home, that I think the average size is seven seven kilowatts for yeah seven thousand. And what size watts. home is seven, that roughly? Twenty five hundred. It, could, it, could, okay. it depends on the size of the roof and and whether you have you you know you don't have the trees and but going through that we went through and we checked it you know a couple times and actually the savings are incredible. You can get somewhere between thirty to sixty percent and that's after payments on the solar loan. So if somebody's got a $2,000 electric bill and you can provide most of that through solar, you can reduce that by, say, if it's 50%, that's $1,000, which is a significant savings. So for those people, the, the solarized works. It's just a great economic deal. And do you deal. see that savings right away? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. How much? Let's take that average home, roughly, you know, two-story, roughly 2,500 square feet. What does it cost to put it in, roughly? You know, as range. Yeah, the uh, range is, is really the operative word. Um, and I want to speak to what Frank was just saying about the savings. There are two ways that you can do solar through us and the SolarEyes program. And either, in either case, you own the system. There are companies out in the world that are doing leases. Lease, have, uh, lease programs have some disadvantages that I won't go into. But we're doing it either flat out purchase or financed. And I want to, want to distinguish finance from a lease because with finance, you're still the owner. It's not a third party that owns this thing attached to your roof for a 30 year or 20 Well, it's like the difference with a lease. car, leasing yeah. it versus buying right. it by financing. Yeah, and getting right. a loan. Right. So here you, you can get a loan on solar. For some people, this is what makes the most sense. It's um, you know zero cash down, so they don't have to lay out a cent. Uh, the loan payments don't begin until the system is turned on. And at that moment, they are simultaneously saving X on their okay. electric purchases from Con Ed, let's say, and then the loan payments are kicking in. And as Frank was saying, typically you're going to see the net result is you're just saving 30, 40, 50, maybe even 60 percent right from day one without having to lay out any cash. Now, some people, for various reasons, they really don't like to take out loans or they'd rather not tie up the cash and, mm -hmm. you know, so on. Some people would prefer just to pay for the system outright. And for those people, they're typically going to see the system pay for itself in about four or five years. And then for about the next quarter of a century, that system's just getting, giving them free electricity. Okay, but I still haven't heard a range of numbers. <laughs> okay, the range of numbers, yeah. So, but I want to make the important point, if they finance it, the range of numbers is zero through zero. They don't have to put anything down. Right. If they're purchasing it, Solar well, they ultimately have to pay for it if they're financing well, yeah, it. Yeah, but they're paying it over 15 years spread out. So right, right. all they the see the is a reduction right. in costs monthly. What's the implied um, interest rate? Years. Um, for this on-bill program that was extended for another right. year yes. is 3.49% fixed. Another incredible thing. Yeah, for 15 years. Okay. And yep. the low interest rate and spreading it out over 15 years makes the monthly payment so low that that's how they're so cash positive. Okay. The monthly payments are a lot lower than the right. savings on the electric bill. If they're purchasing it, solar's a little bit complicated because um, most of it is funded through tax credits. So, so people have to be paying tax to New York State and the federal government for it to work. But they're generally going to have to lay out, if they're paying in cash, anywhere from fifteen to $30,000. Okay. They get the tax credits back, and their net cost is going to be somewhere typically between five and 10000 And that's what's going to pay itself off in about five years. And when you come in and you decide that this can, can work, will you give them a breakdown of all those numbers yes. and all the options? Yes, when we give them a proposal, it has yeah. all of the different subsidies, you know, the cost, the payback analysis, all of okay. that. I can clearly. testify to the fact that when, <laughs> they, when you get a proposal, it is extremely detailed and also has the, the tier pricing, the different financing options, what you would pay in each, in each instance. Okay, now, I, I, we have a limited amount of time, and I have some important okay. questions people wanted to get to. Does the program apply to apartment buildings or other multifamily dwellings? You know, I just want to. Uh, yes, it can. I, I was okay. wondering, isn't right. that yes or no? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it depends on the ownership structure is the short answer. Mm -hmm. But it, it absolutely can, and they are very attractive buildings because of their larger roofs and usually flat roofs and no question of trees. But let mm -hmm. me make an important distinction. If you are an apartment renter, so if it's a rental apartment, you're not going to get solar for your rental unit. The building, building. might get solar right. for what's called common area electric, for lobby lighting and elevators mm -hmm. and any other shared things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does this only apply to electricity? You know, for example, many of the homes here are heated by oil or natural gas. Yeah, and this is solar electric. We call it photovoltaic or PV for short. It's only electric. Yeah. Yes, yep. it's only electric. So it's not going to help with our home heating bills for those no. of us. Uh, unless you have electric heat. <laughs> Got right. it. Okay. What about the older homes? Mm -hmm. um, we have a community full of them. Mm -hmm. Slate roofs. Slate roofs, not so good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I should right. say that slate and Julia, who has the, right. the okay. ceramic tile, yep. those roofs don't work well for solar. Okay. What about the aesthetic appeal? I noticed through your brochure the houses in the photographs were newer styled homes. Mm -hmm. 
they tended to be they, they tended to be newer looking homes. Yeah, and you know I've been doing this for over ten years, and the question of aesthetics has always come up. Well, I'm sure. And so what I answer people is first of all, if you look at an asphalt shingle. Um, and really look at one. I would challenge you to tell me what's so beautiful about it. It's a look that we have gotten used to, and, and taste is taste. So if somebody doesn't think solar is going to look good on their particular style of home for whatever their reason, I'm not going to try to convince them otherwise. Right. But we do have solar on older homes as well as modern ones. Um, and is it possible to just do the solar, let's say, on the back of the house where it, it doesn't affect yes. curb appeal? Yes. Yeah. If it's south facing. That, yep. That's where yep. ours were. We never had a single complaint about the look of the solar on the roof. And I actually found it attractive. And not only that, I think it's so much more attractive than all the wires that we have everywhere. So I, I have no problem with, with the aesthetics. Okay. And then lastly, because we are running out of time, mm -hmm. how does it affect your ability to repair your roof? And how much repair does a solar panel, do solar panels require? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also an excellent question. Solar panels are going to last probably in the neighborhood of 30 years. So if you have a 20-year warranted roof that's already 15 years in, um, it's, you're not going to get another 30 years out of it. You're better off replacing the roof now and putting the solar on. Because to take it off and put mm -hmm. it back up again, is, you're going to use professionals who know what they're doing, and that's going to be an expense. Do you end up taking down the whole roof and doing it, or is it just the sec sections? Just a section. Just sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are unfortunately oh. very out of time. I'm. Thank you for joining us, our guest Julia Steinmetz, Lee Streisfeld. I'm sorry. That's okay. Streisfeld Leitner. Thank you, and Frank <laughs> Owens. Thank you for Thank joining you us. Much. Thank you for having us. Join us next week when we're discussing the Larchmont Library project, and we'll be back in a moment with more community stories. This week in sports, Mamaronik's Eric Greenberg with quick thinking uses his head and someone else's to score the goal in the LMC Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Harris has it here, or not Harris, excuse me, yeah. Greenberg, Greenberg has it and he'll score, Greenberg, what a goal. And it's 8-7, Mamaronik with 4.46 left in the third here on LMC Varsity Sports, a game that shaping up to be an instant classic. How about that one? Right off the noggin, that must have hurt. <laughs> this week on In the Spotlight, we bring you the story of two famous fashion designers who live in Mamaronik. John Schifiano has the story. Hello, my name is Jesus Estrada, and this is my twin brother, Antonio Estrada. And welcome to Marteo and Estrada, where the magic happens. Antonio and Jesus Estrada are both fashion designers, originally from Mexico, now residing in Mamarone. We actually have not even um, kept a count of how many designs we've designed, maybe close to almost 100 designs of our with our label. People need to know that everything here is made by you and I, so everything here is custom. It's Fair. made here in Westchester, and I do feel that Westchester needs people like us um, where they can get inspired. And looking back at our interns, you know, a lot of the interns are so passionate about fashion, but there's really nothing here in Westchester that they can really gather inspiration from. Jesus was featured in season seven of the show Project Runway. I'm so happy and blessed that I had the opportunity to do Project Runway because it really made me realize that I wanted to be a fashion designer for the rest of my life. And now that I have my brother on, my, on, on board with us doing everything together, I think it's created a big force and it's also created more opportunities for myself and him. While Antonio was featured on Discovery Channel North to South. An amazing experience, like I traveled Latin America for a whole month and that completely changed my life. Me being on that show um, really um, taught me a lot of things and I came out of there saying, you know, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to design. 
We are going to show you around and give you a little um, heads up on the latest work that we're working on. This is all of our designs right here. Um, we ca carry a ready-to-wear collection here where customers can just walk in and feel free to just handpick um, hand any um, one-of-a-kind designs because we only do a full run size of everything. So it's a small, medium, and large. So once the small is gone, it's gone. So right here we have our, our book section. Like we have our lookbooks that people can look through like our fall 2013. So we have some of our lookbook stuff. And we have our article that has been written for the Journal News. A relaxing, fashionable experience in a local setting. To all our fashion addicts, Martella and Estrada might be the place for you. This week we have two litters of pups available for adoption. Take a look at the spring litter. They are just seven weeks and will be a medium sized dog when grown. If you are interested in adopting any of these puppies, contact the New Rochelle Humane Society at NewRochelleHumaneSociety.org. For next week's show, we will have hypnotist Bob Pargament here from the Westchester Hypnosis Center, excuse me, Hypnosis Center to teach us more about the subject and dive into our subconscious minds. If you want to contact the local live, email us at the local live at lmctv.org and check out our Instagram and Twitter page at the local live. As always, I'm Anthony Carlos. See you next week and have a very happy Easter. Tell us what you think in person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is the local live.